What's up guys, welcome back to a new video. Now tonight's video is a little bit different to what I've been recording. It's not gonna be a vlog as such, it's gonna be more about an educational video. Um, here in the gym, we put a lot of workshops and seminars on, so it's trying to, uh, just trying to provide a lot more value and a lot more education to our members and clients. Um, so last night, I recorded this for you guys as well. We went through the nutritional fundamentals for fat loss. So um, please sit back, relax, Take a pen and paper, and if you have any questions, pop them down below, and I'll do my best to uh, to help you. But for now, enjoy, and I hope you learn. How's everyone? Good. Good turnout. So, uh, yeah, thanks very much for coming tonight. And uh, hopefully I can kind of give you a lot more knowledge on how the nutrition works. We go through all the evidence-based research on how it all works too. So no fads, nothing like meal plans and things like that. Here is the science. This is basically how it all works. So when you come into nutrition, there's a priority pyramid, okay? So usually people will come into a gym, not this gym, but other gyms, and they'll start off if they want to get shredded or want to lose weight. They'll start off here and go for a fat burner, all right? I'm gonna train really hard, hit the fat burners, then they'll look at trying to maybe have protein straight after their workout, get the gains in, and not worry too much about this end of the scale. But really, what drives results is gonna be your calories in here, okay? So, we're gonna discuss the first three of the nutritional priority pyramid. Okay, so uh, let's get into it. All right. So, as I said, so there's going to be a lot of different diets. Okay. So, as you can see, that we've got clean eating through 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 eating, clean eating, paleo, eliminating sugars, meal replacements, herbal life, intimate fasting, isogenics, flexible dieting. There's heaps. All right. And it all falls down into one pot here. And this is what the driving factor of losing body fat, right? Is a calorie deficit, okay? Does anyone know, not know, don't be afraid. Does anyone not know what a calorie deficit is? Don't know? Does anyone else? You boys all know? Yeah, you're on point. <laughs> so a calorie deficit. So calorie is energy, all right? And a deficit is less. So that means that we need to have, we need to burn more energy than we're consuming. So that's kind of, it sounds very simple, but that's the basics of how things work, okay? So, now we're gonna move on a little bit more about macronutrients. So macronutrients is what makes up of calories, all right? Protein, fat, carbohydrates. So in terms of the calories, you're gonna see is protein, in one gram of protein is four calories, in one gram of carbs, there's nine calories, and also in carbohydrates, there's one gram of that, it's gonna be four calories, all right? So, these are the reasons why they're important. Okay, so we've got the protein, it's recovery, it helps grow and retain the muscle, especially when you're in a calorie deficit. When you're in a calorie deficit, your body is trying to get energy, right? And if you're not providing your body with its energy, the first place it's gonna go after is your muscle. So, everything that you work hard for in here, and if you're not eating enough protein, it's gonna go for it, and you're not gonna have, I guess for the girls, the tone look is gonna be gone because you're not gonna be holding muscle, right? So that one's gonna be really, really important for you. Um, also, it's a great energy source. Carbohydrates is a great source of energy, and then fat is gonna be great for things for your hormones, and it can supply other uh, hormones as well to your body that your body doesn't produce. The most, the, the biggest priority macronutrient, as I was kind of getting to in the last slide, is your protein. So, like I just said, if you're training really, really hard in the, in the gym and you're progressing everything in a great nature, then you're gonna be able to try and maintain that muscle, right? So we're just gonna give you the shape. If you're not prioritizing the protein and you're, which, you know, is probably the hardest macronutrient to hit, then you know when, I guess, you're starting to lose weight but you kind of get that skinny, chubby look, you know, something that you're not, happy with yeah and you don't have you don't have the shape that you want you know and, and you thought that you might look different and a big reason would be because you're not maintaining your muscle right so protein try and 
feed your body that so it can retain as much muscle as possible. Because as soon as you're in a calorie deficit and you're, you're not eating as much as your body wants to anymore, it's going to try and grab that muscle. So we're now going to start talking about micronutrients. So micronutrients, does anyone know what micronutrients are? Shoot out. Yes. Vitamins and minerals. They was what's going to make your body, like I guess it's how the processes works in your body. Okay? They're the things that, you know when you start eating healthy and you're feeling good, and you've got a lot of energy, this is why. Because you're, you're eating foods that are higher in micronutrients. Okay? So they're things like uh, fiber, so you can get a lot of things from fruit, vegetables, um, grains, things like that. So that one's going to be really, really important. Um, you kind of really want to roughly aim for about 25 grams a day, depending on your calorie intake, but about 25 grams a day hitting your fiber intake. Okay? So we're looking at like two to three serves of vegetables, two to three serves of fruit, um, things like that. Yeah? So really, really important. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. End of the day, no matter what type of diet that you're eating, you have to eat in a calorie deficit to lose body fat. And if you're not losing any more body fat anymore, you're not in a calorie deficit. Like that is the simplest form, of the way I can explain it as possible. Yeah. Um, and that's why I was trying to show you before. There's that a lot of different diets are around, and you can choose them if you want to, but. You could have, let's say an example, right? You, your body burns 3,000 calories a day, right? And that can come from, uh, from when you wake up to when you go to bed. So you could be brushing your teeth, going to the toilet, getting ready for work, going to work, clicking the mouse, everything, right? You're burning calories throughout the whole day. You need to eat less than that 3,000 calories that burn. Yeah? Yes. Yep. We're going to get to that part. Yeah. But yeah, depending on your activity level, don't get too keen. Depending on your activity <laughs> level, it's all going to be different. That's why, like, everyone is individualized. You can't just go for a cookie cutter and I guess the things like uh, stuff that's like 1,200 calories, things like that. That don't work. All right. And I'll, I'll explain that a little bit later. All right. So, what do we know so far? All right. So, in terms of calories, that's what's going to dictate you losing weight or gaining weight. Yeah, it's not the type of foods that you're eating, it's the calories. Macronutrients is going to help your body composition. So the body composition means that like you, you know how much muscle to body fat that you're holding, right? So like I just said before, how protein is really important. Maintain that protein, maintain the muscle. And if we're eating in a calorie deficit, we're going to start to lose body fat, right? So that's why protein is really important, calorie deficit is really important, okay? Um, micronutrients just helps how the body functions, yeah? Okay. All right. So now we're gonna start talking a little bit about long-term success. All right. So nothing happens overnight. Nothing happens over 10, 12-week programs. It's gonna take a while. It's gonna take consistency. Right. So how do you build a consistency? Is trying to eat with foods that's gonna suit your lifestyle. Right. So this is why flexible dieting works. Instead of going into you know, a restricted meal plan and cutting out from sugars and chocolates and things that you enjoy. As soon as you cut out things that you enjoy, what happens? You crave it, that's right. So, if we can try and find ways to be able to try and incorporate that in there within moderation, we're gonna be a lot happier, we're gonna be a lot more consistent you know, with hitting our, our, our macros. So, flexible dieting, a lot of people think that it's gonna be eating a lot of shit, right? Now, it's not like that. While you can incorporate foods like this, like I said before, you still want to have, you know, you want to incorporate your micronutrients, yeah? Um, your whole foods, that's really going to be really, really important. So, we're looking for about 80% of your whole foods, and then 20% of foods that, you know, you enjoy. So, that's how you can kind of get that balance, right? So, there is not one food that's going to burn body fat. There's not one food that's going to put on body fat, right? There's no magic foods or anything like that. End of the day, all foods, hold calories, all foods hold macronutrients. It's how you be able to incorporate these foods into your numbers, yeah? And then that way you, you can actually eat guilt-free because you can have an understanding of how it all works for your body, okay? And then I guess this is where people get it wrong. They kind of want to say, all right, I'm gonna go on a new diet, I'm gonna start Monday. They throw out all the, all, all the bad stuff out of their food, out, out of their cupboards, and sooner or later, they can't maintain it, or they go on a very, very low calorie diet, which they can't maintain, and they shoot themselves in the foot. Okay. 
So, here's a little, I've got a few tips on how to, I guess, increase, uh, help in, improve your calorie deficit. So, this is a thing called NEAT. So, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So, this is activity that your uh, calories that you're burning when you're not exercising, like being in here, right? So, a great one is um, what we work with our clients is steps. So, trying to in increase your steps during the day is going to increase your NEAT. Right, so these are going to be burning. With the, you can see here with a little bit of the, the comparisons here. This is going to be um, calories that you're burning. So you're trying to build the calorie deficit. So you're trying to increase that. Right. So the calories that you're burning is 2,000. We're going to see if we can try and burn even more. But not in exercise. Activity thermogenesis could be like brushing your teeth and things like I was just saying before with Vinny, like putting your clothes on, things like that. So, a um, couple of tips is like parking a little bit further away and or using the steps instead of using a lift, things like that. Okay. Alright, this one's a good one. This is the one that I've used quite a lot, intimate fasting, right? So, let's say for instance you have 2,000 calories to burn or to, to eat in a day. You burn 2,500 calories. So we give you 2,000 calories per week. So you're in a 500 calorie deficit. So now this is up to you with how, how you'd like to eat, right? So you re wouldn't really try and eat all your 2,000 calories first thing in the morning because you're going to be starving for the rest of the day, right? And you, it could work for you where you try and spread out your food throughout the day, which works for a lot of people. Um, but again, it's going to try and suit your lifestyle, right? So for me, I have a big sweet tooth and I like to eat a lot of food at night time, right? especially dessert. So what I like to do, and I've kind of used this for a long time now, is that I don't eat anything until midday. Right? So I just kind of, I have my breakfast at about 11.30, 12 o'clock. Um, for me, that way then, because I'm going to bed, let's say 10 o'clock, I've now got from 12 o'clock in the afternoon till 10 p.m. at night to eat. Whereas if I was to eat in the morning, I've got a bigger window to eat a lot of food. I've got to spread it out. Probably would be finding it harder to, to, to stay on my numbers and probably want to eat over because I'm going to be hungry. So if I can try and do this intimate fasting and kind of just drink some water you know, to try and put me on. And for me, I'm busy during the morning. So that's why it works for me. But um, yeah, that's kind of how the intimate fasting works. You're just trying to make your, your eating window a lot smaller. So that way then you can have high calorie foods in that little window. Because at the end of the day, you've got to eat that, that many calories. Yeah, so whether you spread it out or make it in a small window. Another way is sleep. <coughs> so if you're not, if you haven't slept enough, then you probably would, would have already experienced it when you have big nights on the weekends and then you guys come in on Saturday for on a Monday and you don't have the energy, you're like, oh shit, I had a bit of a shitty weekend. The intensity level is not high in here. Yeah, Who, who's had that? Seen you all, come on. <laughs> Seen you all. <laughs> so, you know, with, so with lack of sleep, it's gonna in decrease your intensity. Uh, it's gonna de decrease your motivation. You don't feel like working out. You probably could have had a big night and you don't like to come in. You're like, oh, I just want to go to the gym. I don't really want to do that. Um, so again, it's, it's decreasing your motivation. It's decreasing your adherence to nutrition. You know, it's very hard to then follow something that you've got already set structured when you're not motivated. Um, and then these all will lead to an increase in your calories. So sleep, very important. All right, so a little bit of fun fact, mixing it up, because now it's becoming Easter. So a Cadbury cream egg, everyone, I'm sure everyone loves Cadbury cream eggs, yeah? 177 calories. So if Mary, has 1,600 calories in a day, and she eats a Cadbury cream egg, she still has over 1,440 calories to eat for the day. So you know when you hear people when they eat, eat something, and like, oh, I'm gonna go and burn it off. Yeah, what about that? You don't need to, because at the end of the day, it's just it's calories. So let's say, for instance, this bottle is my, my calorie intake for the day, and the water is my calories I've eaten so far. And for me, for the rest of the day, I've kind of got to fill that up. So if I have this cabin cream egg, it just put me up a little bit higher. So I've still got this room left to go until I hit my intake. Does that make sense? It's still gonna fit into your carbohydrates and your fats. So that's why it will all fit. You know, it's, it's gonna come down to how you guys can manage that and make it make smart approaches. Does that make sense, Finn? Yeah? You've never had one? Mate, get yourself down at Woolies. Huh? 
You've never had a pepper cream egg. You guys are missing out. <laughs> hmm? Does anyone got questions anything about that before we start looking at in terms of calories and everything? Then you you can still lose body you can still lose weight on on eating this many calories or this many eggs in 1,600 or 1,600 calories, right? But, but, you're not, but you're not eating this protein. Yeah, and then this is where you're not going to have a nice body composition because you're not maintaining the protein intake. Um, you're also going to feel pretty shitty because you're not getting all those micronutrients in your body. But you can definitely eat that. Like you could you could lose you could put on weight by eating 3,000 calories of vegetables and the body can only handle 2,000 calories because you're in a 1,000 calorie surplus, right? So it doesn't matter with what you eat, but don't go and eat like anything you want, right? It kind of goes back to this here. Because if you're eating, right, while these foods taste great, they're gonna be higher than calories. So like I said, go back to that bottle. If it's, uh, Eight o'clock in the morning, and we decide to go and have. Oh no, we're gonna we're gonna have a burger, chips, and a beer, and that puts us in the bottle. Remember, the bottle is at the top. This is gonna be our three thousand calories that we can, we need to eat every day. That's gonna put us up to here. You've got the rest of the day to eat only that much, right? So, yeah, we have the paper cream eggs on top. <laughs> but like, you could have, for instance, pizza. But as long as you're factoring in into like the bottle, right, you can have a good balance. And that's the thing is what well, people will put on weight when they go and eat these type of foods because they are already high in calories, but throughout the day, they're gonna go and eat other foods like they would anyway. So those, that, that other foods that they're eating is just pushing higher and higher, and then before they know it, the water or the calories, is starting to overflow, but they still continue to eating. Because if they just had, for instance, the pizza, or these burger and chips, they're already high in calories. Does that make sense? But I mean, you could have you could go into this intimate fasting and not eat for the rest of the morning, and then you could have this, and it only reaches you know maybe like up to here, and then night time you've still got like this amount of food left, providing again it sits in your protein, your fat, your carbohydrates. Yeah. So you can have it, you can lose weight, but you still want to be able to hit these numbers. No. No. So if we have 2,000 calories in a day, right, and we have to eat that every single day, so it's a week. So that's 14,000 calories. In the big scheme of things, you need to make sure that you're eating 14,000 calories at the end of the week. You could borrow calories from other days and put that in, to, depending on your lifestyle, weekends, things like that. Weekends, you, you want to go up higher. During the week, you might need to come down low, but you still need to hit that 14,000 calorie mark, right? So in terms of that, then you don't have to worry about eating before you go to bed. You can, if you want to. It's not gonna go and put body fat on or anything, right? So, because you're still eating in a calorie deficit. It's not gonna just sit there and just store because it's got nothing to do. You're in this energy deficit regardless, yeah? But if you go into, you know, your daily intake was 2,000 and you're starting to creep over that, it doesn't matter what time of day that you're eating it, it's, it's more than your body requires. Does that make sense? So yeah, eat away at night. Get away. I, I usually, I have dinner and then I'll go and have like a bowl of ice cream and then once I've done that, I'll, just, I'll go to bed. It's not going to be good on, good on the body fat. What about drinking? Drink? <laughs> you need to ask this one. Drinking, drinking is fine. It's actually part of, it is, an, it is a macronutrient. Yeah. Um, but what you would need to do is because it all holds calories, you would need to try and subtract the amount of calories from your carbs and fats. So, because you still need to, eat, need to eat the protein, so if you can try and say, let's say if it's 200 calories, then go and try and minus that from carbs and fats, whichever one that's gonna suit you better. But yeah, you can still lose weight by drinking alcohol. But again, it's all that balance, you know? And that's why I'm showing you that you don't have to restrict yourself from anything because everything works within moderation. Moderation is, is the key, and you probably heard that from other things too. If you got, if you got yeah. Yeah. And like if yeah, if if you're going out or you're going into a party or something, I would try and manage what you're eating with eating just protein foods that are very low in fat. Um, 
and then try and, I know you'd probably be really, really hungry because I've done that before, but then I can go and enjoy myself at night time. I can eat the same thing as everyone else is and still hit my goals. But it is, it is a little bit harder, but it can work, it can definitely work. So you guys all got your phones on you, we're gonna to start to try and calculate your calories and how much you guys are gonna eat. So, let's start working out your calories, right? So, Vinny, this is where I was gonna talk, I was talking to you before then about how everyone's different. Everyone's gonna fall on this bit of a scale just here, all right? So, now we're gonna start off, we're gonna try and find your maintenance calories, right? Maintenance calories is pretty tough. If you'd run uh, a more accurate way to find this out, you would need to go and it'd probably take a bit more longer, probably about two weeks to try and find this, but it'd be trial and error and just tracking your food and then managing your weight, right? But we don't all have two weeks, so we're gonna try and find a little bit of a quicker solution. As a rough guide, yep, what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply our body weight in pounds. So if anyone that doesn't know what your body weight in pounds, it's 2.2, right? So multiply your body weight by 2.2. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply it by activity levels. So this is why everyone's gonna be a little bit different. If you find yourself not training too much, which you all should be, and you're in an office job, then you're gonna sit at the lower end of the spectrum. Or if you find yourself training about four to six days a week, and you've got a lot more of an active job here, um, you'd sit at the higher end of the spectrum. Okay, so the next two is your fats and carbs. So fats and carbs, before I move on, fats and carbs are gonna come down to personal preference. Protein is gonna be a set number and a little bit of equation there, and also your calories. And the other two, all, all preference. So, and it depends on how much, what, how you like your food. If you like foods that are higher, like a little bit more fattier, then we're gonna be able to give you a little bit more fats. But then, as well as that as a spectrum, you've got fats there and you've got carbs there with the seesaw. If you're going for more fats, the carbs are gonna have to come down lower because we've already got set calories, set protein. These two are gonna make up the rest of the calories already. Does that make sense? So if you like more carbs, it's gonna tip this way, carbs are up higher, fats are gonna come down lower, all right? So with that in mind, this is where you're gonna to start to now work out how much fat that you like. So multiply your body weight between 0.25 to 0.4. Again, the same spectrum as what we just did in the last one. Is it still in pounds? Yeah. yeah, still in pounds. Once you have that number, put it into your notes. So for Sarah, she enjoys high carb foods like myself. So she's gone for a lower end of the spectrum, she's gone 0.25, which means that she's gonna have a lot more carbs to play with. So for her, her She's at 35 grams of fat per day. Okay, carbohydrates. So now we have our protein intake and our fat intake. And we already know what our calories are. So now this is what we need to do is we need to work out how much calories are in our protein, how much calorie in our fats. Remember beforehand, I said there was, in one gram of a protein, there's four calories. In one gram of fat, there's nine calories. So what I need to do is your protein, your daily protein intake, times it by four. That's gonna give you calories of protein. So put that right next to the protein intake on your notes. Okay, so once you have your protein calories, I want you to get your fat calories. So your fat per day in grams times it by nine. All right, so now once you have those two calories, I want you to add those calories together. Now with that number, I just need you to write that down or put that into your calculator. Now that you have your, that number, you wanna minus that by your daily intake calories, what we've got from the start, okay? This is for Sarah. So she's got 1,640 calories. Her protein calories is 552. Her fat calories is 315. It gives us 773 calories left. What you need to do now is 
the calories remaining that you've got on your phone and the calculator, I want you to divide that by four. Hurry. Yeah, divide that by four. Because there's four calories in one gram of carbs. Okay? So once you have that number, you have your carbohydrate intake. Yeah? So now you have your protein, fat, and carbs, and also you have your calories. So it'll end up looking not like that, but that is, that is Sarah's intake. So again, that she liked lower, fat, uh, higher carb foods, so we've brought her fats down. We've also given her a lot more carbs, just 193 grams of carbs. All right? So now that you have that, you're like, what the hell do I do with these numbers? Here's your new best friend, my fitness pal. There's also a new app, um, a stunt to create some traction on their app store. It's called Fit Genie which is uh, supposed to be another new um, calorie counter app as well. So I'm yet to try that out, but I want to like to try it because it's pretty good. Does everyone know how to use MyFitnessPal? If you, you guys, now you have your number, the better you get at that app, the better your results are going to be. All right? So don't wing it and just you've got the numbers now and you're just going to go and try and eat points of that as the day goes on. Preparation is going to be key. If you're not prepping beforehand and knowing exactly how much or how much of food you're going to eat and the results are, you're not going to hit those numbers and prior could be a few days before could be the day before could be the morning off um, write that in my fitness power and then from that you can adjust with certain foods to make sure you're hitting your numbers and do i need to eat this much rice to make sure that i'm hitting my carbs or oh, i'm going over i'm going to have to bring down my rice instead to make sure that i'm hitting my carbs as an example yeah so preparation is going to be key. Um, the good thing that I like to do is I've got a foundation of food that I have every single day. So on the weekend, on a, on, I'll write for the Monday and I'll put all the foods that I'm having every single day on that Monday. Now from there, I'll press edit, select all, and I'll copy it to Tuesday, copy it to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. For me, my dinner is the only thing that's different. So I'll then go on down Tuesday and I'll just change my dinner and I'll make sure that I change my dinner to suit my macros. But then it's a lot, it's less management on there. It's not as time consuming. That's something that I like to do, to do an easy trick, okay? Um, and then adherence is your biggest thing. If you're not following it, you're not gonna get the results, okay? And this is the big reason why for us as coaches, we have a lot of data for everyone to check in with. And if they're not hitting their calories, there's no need to adjust anything because they're not hitting it just yet, right? So the better you keep hitting your numbers, the better your results are gonna be. Over time, your results, you're gonna continue getting results, but then things slow down, things adapt to what you're consuming, right? Um, what you would need to do is you'll need to increase your energy by increasing your steps or kind of going and doing a little more cardio or then you can drop your calories, right? So for instance, cardio, it's gonna be a tool to assist you to lose body fat. It's not gonna just go thrown in there right at the very beginning because then, like I said before, is your body's just gonna adapt. It's gonna adapt to that cardio you're already doing and then you need to do a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna quickly show you exactly how we work with our stuff. So we have a check-in hub here. So we put in for our clients and we'll put in our macros in here, um, any notes, we have daily steps that we want them to hit to really help increase that need. Um, and then we also have how many hours of sleep that they're gonna be needing. Again, just to help with that, with, the, with it, it being a calorie deficit. From there, they're gonna be starting to track their nutrition through MyFitnessPal. And then at the end of the day, they'll have their summary and they can see exactly how, many, how much they've eaten every day. We throw that, they then throw this into their days. At the end of the week, it'll give us a weekly goal versus how much they've had in the week. And then from that, it'll show us the difference. Now this difference is the adherence that we're looking for. If these numbers are, are completely out of the difference of what we actually need them to do, then there's no need to change anything yet because you just haven't been as adherent. So this is the reason why then you're gonna be getting results by understanding this. Um, we have steps in here as well, a very similar thing to here. So we're looking for a weekly goal and then also for the sleep too. And then from there, you want to be able to track your measurements. So in this section here, we've got our measurements, um, and that's how you guys are gonna be tracking your progress, right? So what we have is a thing is, we get the guys to track their weight throughout the week, 
because what happens is it all fluctuates yeah so what are we at here 59.5 59.2 59.5 59.5 58.8 58.6 so it's a little bit like this okay could be a lot of things could be your vows could be the time of the month could be the food that you've eaten the night before could be a lot of things right so for us if we can get the morning weight then we can find the average so that's a, that's something that we do and then also the other good big thing is that you want to do your measurements this is how it's going to show you your results right don't just step on a scale every week or every fortnight and that's going to you're going to see your progress that's not going to show you your progress at all okay you've got to check your measurements this is where it's going to show um, if these are starting to go down lower, bang, don't adjust your calories, don't adjust your macros, right? If these are starting to stay the same for probably, let's say, two to three weeks, then I would then suggest then looking at trying to reduce your calories. Now, when you adjust, you only want to drop slowly. You want to adjust either or, or both fats and carbs. Now, you only want to do it just slightly, all right? You only want to have make smaller smaller changes, so you could drop your carbs down by five grams. If you're dropping it down by five grams, then you're multiplying it by a whole week. There's a bit of a change there. Yeah, you're dropping your calories down. So you want to make smaller adjustments, and the better you hit your macros, the better your results are going to be. If you hit them to a T, your, your, your results are going to be really good. The better you get at my fitness power, the better you hit your macros, the better you're preparing beforehand, the better your results are going to be. If you're not checking in constantly. You're not doing your macros, you're not hitting your numbers, your results aren't gonna be there, okay? All right, thanks guys. Thank you. Have a good night.